Hey guys, it's Robin and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. Today we're going to be talking about diet and its influence on stem cells. I know it's been a minute since I've posted on this channel, that's because I've been super busy with grad school, but then I thought what better way to get back on here than to actually talk about a few things that I'm learning in grad school. So I'm studying biochemistry and biotechnology, and of course that is very much related to the science of self-care, the science of our bodies, and how we take care of ourselves. So today I wanted to review this uh, literature piece um, entitled Ketone Body Signaling Mediates Intestinal Stem Cell Homeostasis and Adaptation to Diet. Now I know that's mouthful and it probably doesn't mean a lot to most of you, but I think that it's a very interesting paper to review and I think it has some relevant takeaways for all of us. But before we get into this paper, I want to talk a bit about the anatomy of our intestines. So our gut lining is very interesting. It's made of these peaks and valleys called crypts and villi. This actually helps to increase the surface area exposure of our gut lining to the nutrients that pass through our digestive system. But interestingly, at the bottom of these crypts live a sort of niche of stem cells and this is where our gut lining is regenerated from. The stem cells will differentiate and move outward and migrate up to become the villi. So a healthy gut lining definitely relies on a healthy stem cell niche. Moreover, our gut epithelium, which you can sort of think of our, as our inner skin inside of our di digestive system, this has a very high cell turnover rate. So you want really healthy stem cells to be able to repopulate your gut well and maintain the integrity of these crypts and villi. So to get back to this paper, this paper wanted to investigate the influence of ketone bodies on the behavior of these stem cells that live in the bottom of these crypts in the digestive system of mice. To review, ketone bodies are alternate forms of fuel that our bodies can use. Normally, our brain and our body is running off of glucose. Certain parts of our body run off of oxidized fat. But ketones are sort of a reserve type of fuel that is used when our body is in a state of starvation and actually runs out of a glucose supply. But this state can also be induced by the very popular and trendy ketogenic diet. And although I truly believe this diet is not a long-term solution for most people, it is interesting to actually study how this diet might influence the behavior of the cells in our digestive system. So that's what this study looked at. This study actually had two groups of mice follow specific diets for four weeks. One group of mice was following a ketogenic diet of around 60% fat, and the other group of mice was following a normal chow diet of 10 to 15% fat plus sugar water supplementation. So this second group was really supposed to be fed on sugar, essentially. Uh, you can imagine these little mice kind of drinking their Coke every day. After four weeks, they took a look at their gut lining, they observed the behavior of the stem cells, and there are some really interesting things that happened. Firstly, there were a lot more stem cells in the crypts of the mice that were following the ketogenic diet. So here you can really see the difference in how the intestinal lining of these two groups looked. Um, they're both as compared to control. The control just being the normal diet uh, without any sugar water. Um, so not only did the crypts look a lot healthier and were there more stem cells, but the gut lining was also able to heal itself a lot better on the ketogenic diet uh, when it was quote-unquote injured through radiation. Interestingly, the group that was fed the sugar water diet when they were also fed exogenous ketones, so not an, a ketogenic diet but just given ketone bodies, they also experienced an improvement in their gut lining. So it's really interesting to see how the things that we're putting in our body are not only fuel for our body to run, but they're also actually signaling molecules that can change the way our cells behave. So in the ketogenic diet, you see that the stem cell population is self-renewing and maintaining its stem cell state, whereas in the glucose-fed diet, you see that the stem cells are differentiating. 
And that's not a great sign if we want to maintain a healthy gut long term. So from this study, we very much see that a higher fat diet can help keep the gut lining healthy through renewing the stem cell population and really maintaining the integrity of those crypts and villi. What should we take away from this? Granted, all of this is in a very small population of mice in a laboratory and these findings should not immediately be extrapolated to, <laughs> to humans and this doesn't mean everyone should be on a ketogenic diet. But what is fair to take away from this study is that the foods that we eat are not only fuel for our cells, but they're also signaling molecules that actually direct the behavior of our cells. We're actually communicating with the cells of our gut lining through what we put in our bodies. So if you really think of your food as not only fuel, but messages to our cells, that might offer us some inspiration for eating whole foods, healthy foods. Another thing to take away from this study is really just the power we have over the way our body functions. Every single day, the choices we make, the foods we put on our plate are already doing a lot. Living a healthy life doesn't have to be sci-fi, it doesn't have to be expensive. It can start with just making really good whole food choices. Um, avoiding sugary drinks, and making sure our meals are balanced and won't swing our blood sugar too much. It, these are great places to start. This is a very technical paper. I think I hit some of the more interesting findings that might be relevant on this channel, but I just wanted to say hello. Come on here and share some of the things that I've been learning in grad school. I'm really excited for the future of science, the future of self-care. It really just reminds me of the power we have to nurture our body and to actually decide how we exist physically in this world, uh, whether we're doing things that support our cell health and our mental health, or if we're actually engaging in behaviors that detract from those things. So that's why I love the science behind self-care. Um, so that's my little update. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye guys!